everyone, welcome back. Today, if you could not guess it, we are going to go over pencil sharpeners. Believe it or not, <laughs> this is one of those things where when you first start coloring, you don't put a lot of thought into your pencil sharpener. A sharpener is just a sharpener, right? Well, not so much when it comes to colored pencils. And when you start hunting for colored pencil sharpeners, one thing you'll notice is there's a ton of choices and you know you'll especially on Amazon you'll have tons of options and people will say they're great for pencils and I, the problem is is I would try these popular ones and get frustrated because my Prisma colors would snap or they wouldn't sharpen they just kept breaking the leads off inside and clogging and so I wanted to kind of do a quick series on the types of sharpeners. There's way more than what I'm gonna go over today. This is kind of just the more popular, easier access versions. And then also the right way to sharpen. Even if, no matter which one of these you end up choosing, you still have to sharpen your pencil a certain way. Otherwise, you're not going to get the right result. So, we'll talk about how to sharpen after we go over all of what this is here. So the first thing I wanted to go over was you have two options. You have manual sharpeners and then you have the electric slash battery operated ones. I have uh, a few manuals and I also have a battery and an electric one. And we'll go over those and kind of the pros and cons of each type just so you get an idea, and then you can pick what works best for you. And that is the, the core message I want you to take away after reviewing this whole thing. This is not a product review by any means. This is kind of like an adult coloring 101, going over the types of sharpeners, how to sharpen, and then you pick what you like. I actually suggest trying a couple. That can get pricey though. So if you wanna start off with something cheap, that's fine, you know, um, but try a few and then you'll get a feel for it. But before I even dive into that, I want to also explain that every pencil sharpener will not work with every type of pencil. So say I just purchased this one and this is all I use. This is not going to work for every single brand of pencil I own. So. As you get more into coloring and your, you know, a collection of pencil brands grows, you might notice that you have to use a different type of sharpener based on the pencil. So first let's go over the manual ones. First we'll go to the super old school little metal ones here. These are super cheap, art. they're in the art section of your craft store. I think this one here was like $1.99 at Hobby Lobby. This one was $3.99 because it has the two holes here. And these are like the basic of basic. You know, they're completely manual. There's nothing to catch the shavings, which is why I use this little jar here off to the side. So if you're looking for something portable, these might not be great because you need to travel with something to catch your shavings. But I will say, these little manual guys here give you the most control over sharpening your pencil. You can see it sharpening under the blade. You can easily get out if your lead breaks, it's easier to unclog. And the cool thing about these dual ones, I never use the big opening here. Instead, I would use this little one but you notice the blades are the same size. So once this blade dulls out, just pop it out, replace it with this one, easy. But same thing with this one. Most of these blades, you can also buy replacements online and some craft stores actually sell the replacement for specific brands. You can always look at the measurements and make sure you're getting the right one. So very cheap. Uh, like I said, you know, $1.99, this is three something. And this one gives me a replacement blade is how I look at it. And then the only bummer is, yes, you need somewhere to put your shavings. These can get pretty messy though. <laughs> I mean, even if 
you're sitting here, you know, shaving over this, you still get all the dust in here. So when you pull it away, it, it's messy. But a lot of colorists enjoy these manual ones, and I don't blame them. I like them too. But for the most part, I only use these on my very expensive pencils that I want super control over, um, like my luminance pencils. I use these ones, but I also can use my Tagal sharpener, which I'll get to in a minute. So this one is the messy one, but the cheapest and gives you the most control. And like I said, you can swap out the blades. These could last you forever. I mean, I've had this one for five years now. So, always a good one. Next type of manual sharpener. So this is the Stadler sharpener, which you can get on Amazon. And it has this little, you open and close the top here. It has a graphite and color, and then a graphite option and then here below you have all the pencil shavings it catches all of them in this little <coughs> excuse me canister here and then it kind of shows you correlating with the hole on top colored pencil graphite so this one I wasn't very impressed with it um, I had heard some colorists say to use the graphite for your colored pencils and you get better, a sharper point, which was true because this one here gives you the blunt edge. But I would almost prefer this one because it chews up less wood, which means your pencils last longer. However, once these dull out, they are not very easy to replace. Let me pull this off here. <laughs> you can get in there and replace them if you can see. See how you have the screws? So you can replace the blade, but uh, you know, the problem is, is I wasn't very impressed. They came with a very cheap blade to start with, so it doled out super quick. And I just didn't like the design. Getting the lid off is rather difficult. And I just didn't like the way it sharpened, to be honest. Even using the graphite, I just felt like the point wasn't that great. And with my Prisma colors <clears throat> being so soft, if I used this one, I would have breakage all the time. But it was like five bucks on Amazon, so it was worth testing out. It does work really well with my Polychromos and Arteza pencils, though. And I haven't tried the cheaper ones like Black Widow or Castle Arts in here yet, but I'm assuming they would work pretty well too because they don't break as easily. So that is one thing to consider. For Prismacolor, I wouldn't recommend this one, but for harder pencils with less breakage, this could be good. Plus, you have this barrel collecting all your shavings, so this is transportable, whereas this is not. And like I said, this one is about five bucks on Amazon. Okay, next manual one. This is the actual Prismacolor sharpener. And I think this one was, it was a little more. It was about eight dollars. $8. And I know you can get them in single and two packs. And I've bought both. And it just kind of varies on what is cheaper at the time. <laughs> But it has just this little lid that you pop open and then you can see here it has the shorter tip and then the finer you know longer tip here as I always say I prefer to go with this one just because less wood means longer lasting pencils however I honestly do not recommend this sharpener it has tons of great reviews and I have no idea why. Um, it is very cheaply made. It is super hard. See how this black casing comes around it? So you have to wiggle the top just in between here to pop it out and it is super messy. And the blades were not good. Again, you can replace them, so that's always a bonus. But I found that I broke more pencils in this thing, 
out of all my brands. I mean, it would snap off my polychromos in here and, you know, my more expensive pencils, I started to get a little frustrated. So if there's one out of this lot that I say I'm not a fan of, it is this one right here. They also have a Prismacolor Scholar one. Do not buy that one. It is definitely made for the Scholar pencils, which are not the Prismacolor Premier ones. They're not soft and crumbly. Um, they will chew up your pencil. So this one is very popular and it'll show up at the top of your Amazon search results, but again, I don't even recommend this one, so I'm not even putting it in my description link. I wanted to bring it up though because a lot of you will find this one and I'd rather you not buy that one <laughs> if you can avoid it. Okay, so the next manual one is the Tagal. I love these little sharpeners, I really do. They are portable because all the shavings are cotton here and they are adjustable. So these manual ones, you just get two holes, that's it. You know, this one here, single hole. This one has a dial and you can switch between the points. So why do I love this one? Well, like I said, I prefer that stock sharpen that you get on your Prisma colors, so that you know smaller point. That is what I love, and this sharpener can do it. That's the setting number one. But say you want a super sharp point, you know something similar to this. Now this does chew up a ton more wood to get here, but you can still do that on these ones. You just turn the dial to what you're comfortable with. Five would be, you know, tons of lead, super sharp, but it would take a ton of wood with it. One is my favorite. And let's see if I, oop, should have had one already done. That would have made this a lot faster. All right, let me see if I can get it sharpened super quick for you. Okay, dusty. So here is number one. And yes, I'm using my colorless blenders for these because I'm okay chewing these up. I don't wanna use any of my expensive pencils, but see that sharpening there? This doesn't take a ton of wood off your pencil. You still have a sharp point. You know, some would argue that you have to sharpen more often, but it depends on your pressure. But like with my luminance, um, my polychromos, and yeah, it's those two mainly, I stick with this point. Um, with my other ones, like my Black Widows, my Castle Art, all those other ones, I do a four, and that gives you this point here. So you can sharpen anywhere between these two types of points using a single sharpener. So that is one reason I really love these little sharpeners. And you can also close it, which you must do if you're transporting this, because these things leak like crazy. You'll get shavings on your pencils as you're shaving, <clears throat> as you're sharpening them. And if you were to turn it over, I don't know if you guys can see that on the camera, but see all the stuff that just falls right out of the hole. So that is one drawback. The other is the reservoir. Ooh, mine's full. Is very small. So you have to empty it pretty often. So you see here, there's not a ton of room in here for your pencil shavings. Now, the blade is hard to see and it's tucked away in there. I know there's screws and there may be a way to replace it, <clears throat> but I have yet to figure it out. So the 
other drawback to these is once the blade dulls out, which doesn't happen super quick. I know some people say that there's um, dulls out really fast, but I mean, I have had this to gall now for three months and it's still sharpening just fine. But once it dulls out, you pretty much have to just chuck it. So it is kind of wasteful in that sense, but on Amazon, I buy them in two packs and you can get different colors. They have pink, clear, black, blue, and I think that's it. But um, my favorite thing it to do is just keep an eye on them on Amazon for the two packs. It's always cheaper to get the two pack than the one. And keep an eye because certain colors will go down in price. So like the black ones were more expensive, but I grabbed these blue ones for $9.24. So I really love this one, even though I have to replace it more often. I love that I am in complete control of all the sizes here. And I love that I can get that point, you know, the, the one that comes on your Prismacolors like that and save my pencils. Cause I mean, some colored pencils you go to sharpen and you're cringing and you just see like dollar signs coming out with the shavings, <laughs> or at least that's what I see. Especially with like my luminance, I accidentally broke one the other day and went to sharpen it and wanted to cry just because I ended up taking off like this much. It was beyond devastating. So Tagal is my favorite. I'm going to put a link to all of these in the description below except this one. <laughs> so you can, you know, kind of look them around and shop around and see what you like. But that is it for the manual sharpeners. Now we are on to electric and battery. I have tried a couple battery operated ones. This um, Power Me one is by far my favorite. There's another one, oh I can't remember the name, it's like Office something that has a plug. And I found that that one actually chewed up my pencils and it also didn't have an automatic stop. So you could just sit there and press a pencil in and it would keep going and going and going. So you almost had to pop it out, check, pop it out, check. So I wasn't a big fan of that one and it was really hard to empty and it just, over time, it didn't work very well. So I have owned two of these Power Me ones and the only reason I had to replace it was because I dropped one. <laughs> so they are not um, drop proof, you could say, but other than that, they're, they're also portable, um, they are a little heavy, but they're battery operated, the batteries go right in here, it takes four of them, they do not come with batteries, but you have your little shavings here, and it takes a while to fill this up, but one thing I really love about this one is, we can take a unsharpened one here. So it sharpens really well and you can sharpen all the way to a super fine point. It locks in when you stick the pencil in and it is loud <clears throat> but you know it is battery operated. It's fast one reason I really love the battery ones is with certain brands of pencils that are prone to breakage in manual sharpeners. Um, Prismacolor is a big one. Prismacolor, it's mainly their manufacturing, <clears throat> but I get so much breakage with my Prismacolors. I'll sharpen and the lead will pop right out. If the blade isn't sharp enough in any of these manual ones, it starts to crack and just allow for tons of breakage. I mean, I had one pencil one time sharpening even in one of these that I ended up losing like this much pencil to the sharpener before I finally got it to stay. Uh, there are tips and tricks for avoiding that, but I'll do that in another video. But that's one reason I do like these battery ones. Like so, if I notice a core is off center on my Prismacolor, I tend to just sharpen it in this because I know it's not going to break. 
or I will use my X-Acto electric one. Now, the battery operated one here, you do need to stay up on top of your batteries. The second the battery power gets low, you'll notice it doesn't sharpen as quickly and it can even start to leave little knobbies on your pencil. So that is one thing to be aware of. And this one, last time I bought it, it was 19, but the first time I bought it, it was only 16. So I would put this on a wish list and just wait for the price to drop lower and hopefully it does. But either way, um, you're going to spend less than 20 bucks on it and it's still mobile. Whereas this electric one here, this is not mobile at all. It must be plugged into a wall, but of course it is the fastest sharpener you will get. So here we have a, you know, unsharpened one. You just... Now, I don't know if you noticed when I was pushing it in how much wood it took with it. So, you'll get a perfect sharpened point. It will stop sharpening, obviously, once this is sharp. It just makes that noise. And, you know, you'll have no breakage. So, if you have like one of those really pesky Prisma colors that just keep breaking, put it in one of these and you'll get it sharpened. But, it's loud. It chews up a ton of wood and it's not portable. So I keep it on my craft desk and I do use it for those, you know, troublesome Prisma colors. Sometimes when I'm feeling lazy with my cheaper pencils, I'll break out this electric one. I also got it just for my kids' school stuff, but it has this monstrous reservoir that honestly takes forever to fill up. I mean, You'll be here for years before you do that. And then this one actually has the triangular ones. Um, certain colored pencils are actually triangular, so it's nice to have that. And then it also has all the other sizes, which are good because some colored pencils are fatter than the traditional Prismacolor one. But, oops, let me put that back in there. I don't really recommend the electric one unless you have a problematic pencil that will not sharpen and you need to get um, something smooth on it. You can use battery or electric and usually that's with these cheaper ones. I, you're not going to encounter these problems with polychromos, luminance, and all that. They're exceptionally well made. You don't have cores off center. You can usually sharpen those just fine and you should take your more expensive ones and put them in a manual sharpener whether it's this one this one or this or another brand but like I said my favorite is the Tagal and so if you want to know what sizes I use one is the one my go-to for most of my pencils but on my cheaper ones, I do the four and the five because I'm not so worried about the wood there. But most of the time I'm sitting here on a one because I'm using um, my polychromos a lot more lately. But that is kind of a rundown of the different types of pencil or pencil sharpeners. So, you know, it's up to you which you like. And here is one thing to consider. Not all pencils sharpen the same in the same sharpener. I said that at the beginning of the video, but now that you've kind of learned about the sharpeners, I'm going to tell you again. So this Tagal, I can sharpen all my pencils in as long as the blade stays sharp. Once that blade dulls out, it chews up my pencils very badly. This electric um, battery, I tend to only use cheaper pencils in because it does chew a ton of wood, way more than a manual sharpener. Now, these little manual ones work really well with soft leads, um, you know, like your Prismacolors, even Arteza are pretty soft, and Luminance all sharpen exceptionally well in these ones. 
They also can sharpen well in this one, but again, must be sharp blade. So this one over here, I can, you know, you can use your cheaper ones, but because of how often you get breakage and it gets clogged up in there, I wouldn't recommend this Staedtler one for any of your expensive pencils. I would go, if you have an expensive pencil, I would either do one of these types of manual ones or the Tagal. You can use these ones for those cheaper pencils and problematic pencils. But really, these are my two go-to. I have little jars of pencil shavings in every room of the house where I sharpen, <laughs> whether it's because I'm emptying this or because I have this. So I would recommend when you're first starting out, go to your craft store, grab one of these cheap little ones, see what you think about it. You will get a bunch of excess up here that you kind of have to dust off into there, but this is a good place to start. Then start buying these other kinds online, or <clears throat> Hobby Lobby does have some of these. They won't have this one. This is in the US at least. I haven't been able to find this locally. So you will have to buy these online, same with the Tagal. So that part um, you'll have to keep in mind, but really try them out, see what you like. You may also be fine with an electric sharpener or you might be fine with getting this type of point so you want that electric sharpener because you don't want to sit here and do that with a manual one. It's really up to you. I know there's some people who will do coloring videos and you'll hear the sound of an electric sharpener as they're sharpening and people will comment you know or cringe and be like oh you're not supposed to do that you know what it's your money they're your pencils it's your coloring experience do what you want to do like I like I said there's times I just don't care and I'll shove my Prismacolor into an electric sharpener I don't care on that <laughs> I won't put illuminance in there, never. But it's really just your comfort level <clears throat> and what you like. Some people have problems with their hands and their wrists and using these manual ones just you know, makes it worse and they need battery or electric and that's fine too. So it's comfort, budget, and coloring preference. Now, <clears throat> we've gone over all the types of sh you know sharpeners and a few of my brands that I've tried. Now, how do you sharpen? Believe it or not, there is a wrong way to sharpen and we all do it and probably don't even realize it. So, I'm gonna take my colorless blender here. So, <clears throat> by instinct, you know, from grade school and using just pencil sharpeners, we want to stick the pencil in and twist the pencil. So here I am twisting the pencil in the sharpener. That is the wrong way to sharpen. I know, it throws you off, right? <laughs> because that's just human nature to do that. So what you're actually supposed to do with colored pencils is take the pencil in your non-dominant hand, oh, that shaving is really sticking, sharpener in your dominant hand and turn the sharpener. And I will tell you right now, this is the most obnoxious thing you will do when you're first figuring out how to sharpen pencils. It's <clears throat> very awkward and frustrating, and it's almost like trying to write with your non-dominant hand. But you do that because if you turn the pencil, you're actually putting pressure on the lead and you're increasing the chances you'll break it. Whereas if you put the pressure on the sharpener, man, this one's all messy, you're not going to break your pencil, but it's a learning curve and you might actually break leads trying to do it this way. So while this is the right way of sharpening, you know, sharpener in your dominant hand, pencil in the other, I am a rule breaker and I sharpen doing it the way that's comfortable to me, which is turning the pencil. <laughs> but I don't want anyone to develop bad habits, so I'm telling you the right way to do it, and then you can decide if you want to do it that way. Do I get a lot more breakage 
sharpening the pencils myself. <clears throat> um, honestly, I would say it's kind of hit or miss. Most of the breakage I get is from a cheap pencil or a really cheap blade. So I don't necessarily think it's my wrist because I'm not, you know, going crazy here. I'm still gentle, but I still do it with the pencil in my dominant hand, sharpener in the other. However, if you want the right way, swap them. And it will take a lot of time. I just got too frustrated and decided I was going to sharpen the way that made me happy. And that I'll leave up to you now that you know the right and the wrong way. So, if you're new to the channel, thanks for watching. And please do subscribe and then make sure you hit the bell. That way you're notified anytime I post a new video. I am trying to post one every week. But we did just get a new puppy, and thankfully no one heard barking in the background. But with that puppy comes a ton of responsibility and very little free time. But I am still trying to post once a week on Saturday mornings, usually. And then if this was helpful, definitely hit the like button because that actually helps push it to the top. So other people who are looking for, you know, pencil sharpeners for their colored pencils or how to sharpen can find this video. Um, when I first started out coloring, it was actually something I searched because I wanted to know how I should sharpen my pencils and there wasn't a lot of videos. So hopefully this helps you if you kind of are doing that same search I did back in the day. and. I will put links in the description below uh, for the Tagal, the battery operated one, and the Stedler. These ones I cannot because these are from Hobby Lobby, but I'll give you some options. And then again, just remember, it's always your budget, your preference, and your style. And even though there's technically wrong and right ways, I always say there isn't a wrong way as long as it's your way. But until next time. Just keep coloring. Thanks for watching.